Hey guys, uh, in this video I'm going to talk about isolated and non-isolated systems and momentum. Uh, basically, because we've been talking about that in the energy case, I want to talk about it in the momentum case. And the upshot of this whole thing is going to be that it's going to be just like energy, meaning that the definition of systems is going to have a similar role in the momentum case as for the energy case. Okay, so I want to start with equation 8.4 in your text, which is the following. So this says that the net force, the sum of all the forces on a system, is equal to the change in the momentum of the system uh, with respect to time. So if this system is isolated, and by isolated I mean no external forces, the sum of all the forces on this thing is going to be zero. If the sum of all the forces are zero, then just from this equation right here, we have that the change of momentum is going to be zero uh, with respect to time. And this is what you might call intuitive momentum conservation. And by intuitive, I just mean that we can basically write that the final is equal to the initial momentum. And this is intuitive in the sense that we also had energy conservation in a similar way. Um, you know, I know that this is true because if the momentum is not changing in time, then the initial has to be equal to the final. So you might say, okay, well, this is sort of crazy because this condition is almost never realized. Like, even for a uh, freely falling object, the sum of the forces is not zero. There's some acceleration on that freely falling object. We have to remember that when I say isolated, I mean including the entire system. So for the freely falling object, uh, the Earth is included in that system. There's my system. I draw dotted lines to indicate where the system is, where the uh, environment is. And so the net force is zero because I add this and this on the entire system and the momentum is conserved in the entire system. Okay, so let's talk about a non-isolated system. For non-isolated systems, you have to consider the impulse. So this is the definition of the impulse. It is equation 810 in your textbook, and it just says that you sum up all the forces on the object, you integrate those over time, and that gives you the impulse. So I've been talking a lot this semester about the overall physical principles which govern each situation. Conservation of energy, Newton's second law, things like that. So now we're talking about momentum, and there's an overall principle which also governs momentum, which I expect to see on um, a lot of the problems that you're doing. And this goes by the name of the impulse momentum theorem, and it is the following. The change in the momentum is equal to the impulse. So the most important thing about this theorem is that it looks very much like the conservation of energy theorem. And in that sense, what I mean is that the energy conservation theorem had, remember, the change in energy on one side, and then the energy transfer on the other side, and in this class we were mostly considering that to be work. Well, this is similar to the impulse momentum theorem, because here we have the change in momentum of the system, just like here we have the change in energy. And over here we have the impulse delivered to the system, and that's very much like the work done on the system. So over here we have things which are internal to the system, this is the change in momentum of the system. And over here we have things which are external, so impulse um, that's being delivered to the system in the same way that uh, forces delivered work to a system. Okay, so that's a basic overview of isolated and non-isolated systems for, for momentum. The equation might look a little similar, um, in fact it is quite similar, um, and so I want you to start thinking about impulse momentum theorem in the same way that you were thinking about the conservation of energy theorem. It's defining the system is key, knowing what's inside and what's outside the system is key, and this is where we're going to start a lot of the problems that we do in this class. Okay, thank you guys.